Can I apologise in advance? Since I was last here, I've become much older, and um, <laughs> I'm now 50, and my eyes have given in, and these may as well be written in micro dots. <laughs> and there are many, many, many foreign names and na uh, to pronounce tonight, and I can't even read them. So, I'll be doing it all from memory. It'll probably be a total cock-up from start to finish. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Glasses. No, no, because I didn't want to look like Dimbleby with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that gravitas, I can see it. <laughs> <come up. Welcome to Have I Got News For You, I'm Jeremy Clarkson. In the news this week, in a key marginal, as their policies fail to convince, there are signs that Labour are now attempting to win over voters one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> on his way to campaign on the Isle of Wight, Gordon Brown regrets asking the captain for a go at the wheel. <laughs> In London, one man proves that riding on the pavement isn't the most annoying thing that a cyclist can do. <laughs> and after analysing the first leadership debates, body language experts conclude that in the event of a hung parliament, Nick Clegg would dither and then join the Tories. Ian's team is a broadcaster and journalist who presents Ramblings for Radio 4, where she interviews a celebrity while rambling through the serene British countryside over other people's property. <laughs> Welcome, Claire Balding. <laughs> and on Paul's team is a writer and comedian who presented BBC 4's It's Only a Theory, a panel show that mixed science and comedy. A bit like those people who claim that global warming is caused by humans. Please welcome Andy Hamilton. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Paul and Andy, take a look at this. Yes, this is a volcano, of course, in Iceland, and this is the uh, emergency cabinet thrown together. People were stuck abroad, weren't they? And there, there they are, being stuck abroad. And um, they had to hire ships and various things to try and get back to this island because for six days we had no planes in the end. That's the world's longest game of ice spy. Yeah. <laughs> There's never one of those kids with a squeegee when you want one, is there? Let me tell you. <laughs> and I think this is the Earth, the, the planet, the universe, is telling us which way that people should consider voting in the next general election. How? <laughs> well, you know, the volcano, it's been going for about sort of 10,000 years, 20,000 years, so its timing isn't exactly right, but it's basically saying ash down. Ash down. It's 15 <laughs> years out. <laughs> it's 15 years out, but it's saying ash down. That's what it's saying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the. Um... <laughs> yes. Paul <laughs> <laughs> going to get points for knowing that a volcano exploded. <laughs> Who was the man to the left of Peter Mandelson, then, in that picture? Uh, Lord Adonis. Yes, what a yeah. great name. It's a yeah. name that raises false expectations. <laughs> very terribly important people got stuck, including you, in Poland. I wasn't stuck, I just used my ingenuity and got back. Yes. <laughs> you got stuck, didn't you? Uh, no, I used my ingenuity and found a man who was driving to Calais and hopped on his well, car. you just got in a man's car? Yeah, pretty much. A man so called Sydney. That... I'd like to say thank you to Sydney, yes. Were you more stuck than that? No, not really. We were in Poland. Um, and I realised you couldn't make any jokes there because it was the, they were burying everybody. And so... <laughs> oh, that's when people want to laugh at yeah. yes. <laughs> Get a whoopee cushion, you put it in the earth. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just went to Berlin and got the plane to Brussels, but then yeah. Brussels closed, so I went to Prague and flew to Paris and then got the last car they had. And it was all very oh. simple, actually. Yeah. So all those people who are queuing and whinging, being pathetic, really. A lot of them, yes. 
<laughs> bonus point for anyone who can name, or pronounce the name, I should say, of the offending volcano. <clears throat> it's known as That Volcano in Iceland. Yes. <laughs> It is Ayafiatle Yorkut, is what it is. That's what the newsreaders have been saying. They've been practicing all week, yes. so, as have I, Ayafiatle yeah. Yorkut. And it is, that's, that's the name good. of the glacier right. that sit, well, used to sit over the top of it, but which now is all over everywhere. Yeah. The actual volcano, do you know what it's called? Mr. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> The actual name is Gear, which is quite easy to say. <laughs> yeah. As in top? Yeah, as in top. Yeah. Blowing the top. We gear. blew it up. Did you see that? The Daily Mail blowing that stuff. Very good. Blowing it up. <laughs> what did one American traveller say when she was told that all flights back to the States had been cancelled? That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> that made the news? Probably not. No. no, she said, does that apply to business class? <laughs> <laughs> you were abroad as well this week, weren't you, Andy? Was I? Yeah. <laughs> well, don't deny it. We have some footage which proves that you were in Afghanistan. <laughs> in fact, Mr. Wally Ur <laughs> <Yeah>. Raymond, <laughs> why you just admit it? Yeah, I'm a sleeper. For the, uh, for you the, bloody well are. You're the deputy leader of the Taliban. <laughs> well, maybe now I'll get a bit of respect. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not Afghanistan. So I'll just do this so that we cover... I do apologise. We're going right. to run into it now. This I was joke... actually in Sidcup. That was just... Uh... <laughs> this joke has matured, you'll find. It's like wine. It's much funnier now than it was a minute ago when you yeah. first heard it. Yeah, you wouldn't exactly. want to suggest that the leader of the Taliban had been in Afghanistan. That's seriously lively. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they're Andy. very touchy. Yeah. So, Andy, you were abroad this week, weren't you? Was I? Just act. <laughs> he is. He's acting. That was acting. That's that was good. acting. <laughs> If he wasn't acting, he said you'd ask me that a minute ago. But yeah, he's acting. He's acting. He's acting. I was, I was, I was, I was trying like, to be helpful. He's I was good. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll it act. gets so much worse than this in a minute. Ready? Okay. Yeah. You were abroad this week, weren't you, Andy? <laughs> were. were you or weren't you? Come on. You were. What are you? A member of the Taliban or something? <laughs> <laughs> God, you were abroad this week, weren't you? Uh, well, if you say so, yeah, where? <laughs> you were in Pakistan. I have proof. Yes, look, here. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be one of the most bewildering moments. Yes. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we should get up there and start flying again, cos, you know, there's no... Well, obviously the cloud's still there, but there's no risk... Is there? <laughs> <laughs> but it, was not, it was good for six days, though, wasn't it? Here, if you weren't trying to travel anywhere or anything like that, if you were here and you were near an airport and somebody wrote in the front of the paper said, I was in Kew Gardens and I heard a bee on the other side, <laughs> on the other side of the river, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that guy who wrote to The Guardian on that very subject? Thanks to the planes not being flying, he was now able to hear the traffic on the North Circular. <laughs> 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 it's all going to happen again, isn't it? Because, uh, yeah, exactly. you know, volcanoes tend not to work to a schedule. This one's going to keep going. And there's a bigger one up yeah. the road. The papers are going to love it, though, aren't they? Well, they were very keen to say the economy's going to collapse. It's all over. People will be queuing in supermarkets for exotic fruit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've, I haven't had a kiwi for days. <laughs> yeah, I thought the real scandal was Icelandic incompetence. Yeah. It seems to me very odd that uh, nowhere in Iceland have I heard anyone discussing the option of a human sacrifice. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, you laugh. The gods are obviously angry. Very angry. <laughs> but they've been appeased now. We've changed the science. I love the way science works. It, on, on day one, it's far too risky for anyone to fly. Six days later, everyone's lost a huge amount of money. Do you know, I don't think it's so risky anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and what we need is someone to invent a gen jet engine that can cough. Yeah. <laughs> I've been saying this for years. <laughs> People look at you as if you're a lunatic. I know. <laughs> See, this was cleared up for us, I thought, quite well, this danger business. Yes, yes. We've got some footage here of a German man who works for Lufthansa explaining his take mm. on it, OK? We have seen no impact on the engines, no in impact on the 
engine's performance, neither on the uh, cockpit windows nor on the fuselage. I want you to now look at, at a, a chap from the uh, British Institute of Mechanical Engineers and his view on it. It is going to crash and people, everybody on board will die. <laughs> I thought was extremely funny about the whole thing was seeing the panic in the political parties. They realised that they're in an election and they had no official party line on volcanoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're thinking, and the way they all charged in, like Gordon Brown, you know, sent a couple of warships to France, which is just like a default setting. <laughs> when you're in trouble. Exactly. And, and Clegg, I, I half expected Clegg to steam in with a promise that that Lib Dems were going to abolish volcanoes. <laughs> is that part of the old geology? People are sick of them. And Cameron's line? Uh, Cameron's... I met a volcano once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the Guardian's handy cut-out mm, keep guide for worried readers? No. It provided answers to some of the common questions, obviously, that stranded travellers have been asking. For example, if I was bumped from a flight during the crisis, will I be first in line when they start again? OK, the answer is probably not. <laughs> Question. If I was booked on a flight leaving tomorrow, will I still get on it? Answer. It depends. <laughs> Question. Will I get my money back? Answer. Check with the operator. <laughs> Question. I've missed several days' work. Will I lose any pay? Answer, possibly. <laughs> very clear, I think, yeah, as a result. Very very Is there any reason up. for me to read The Guardian? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> there was one Scottish guy who really summed it up, I thought, rather well. You only found out when you got to the yeah. airport. Yeah. You didn't know in your hotel. Or... No. I hate uh, Iceland! <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, he might have an issue with frozen food. <laughs> <laughs> we can end, really, this one on a very positive note. Yes, yes. Because, yep. um, according to the Times, 1.3 million tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions were saved over the past four days because the planes weren't flying. Oh, ah, marvellous. So oh, I can now leave my telly on standby again. Yes. <laughs> no, wait, hang on, I can't, because, of course, this was going on while the planes weren't flying. <laughs> More carbon dioxide there. I thought that was just the exhaust from your car crossing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is. Did, did you the... have to rush back to present Top Gear? No, Top Gear is not. Did oh, you not notice? No. no. <laughs> It's not, think, that's not really your target audience. Actually, this we're so not. Is. Yeah. Really? If we can get him, we've won. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Icelandic volcano which caused all flights to be grounded for a week. Keen to explain the technical complexities of flying through volcanic ash, the Daily Star turned to BA pilot Eric Moody, who explained, it's like negotiating your way up on the <laughs> 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 Negotiating? <laughs> I'll I stay a week initially, but after that, <laughs> I'll have to check with the wife. I think I missed that chapter of Wind in the Willows. <laughs> <laughs> Doing their bit to spread the panic, the Daily Express reported that authorities have warned people to stay in or wear a mask. <laughs> Year-round advice if you're Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> According to the Daily Star, the first flight to land in the UK was from Toronto, which seems sensible. If there aren't any Belgians handy, test everything out on Canadians. <laughs> uh, the end of the flight ban is particularly good news for the Samaritans who've been inundated for the past six days with calls from distraught plane spotters with nothing left to live for. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Claire have a look at this. Oh, it's Nick Clegg. Uh -huh. I agree with Nick. It's Clegg, it's Clegg, he's here to stay. I agree with Nick. <laughs> and it's Nick Clegg again. I agree with Nick. Great dance move there. <laughs> Basically, they've got it's Nick Clegg. That's well done. Yeah. That is indeed Nick Clegg. Listen, from the man who complained about the fact yeah. that he had a volcano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was quite upset, actually. We managed to get ready for a long wave on the journey to Calais. And I was really annoyed that the volcano wasn't the lead story, Nick Clegg was. <laughs> Thousands of people having a bad time is nothing compared to the media noticing that the Lib Dems have got a leader. <laughs> <laughs> Up to a week ago, it was impossible to vote for anyone other than Labour or Conservative, and then the Liberal Democrat Party was invented. <laughs> well, well, that is basically what the papers say. Yeah. They did their classic act, and for the last few years, they've gone, oh, Nick Clegg, no-one's heard of him, oh, Nick Clegg. 
he does one debate and everyone goes, why isn't he under more scrutiny from the papers? Because <laughs> <laughs> you've ignored him. <laughs> you know, the second yeah. leadership debate is happening right now over yeah. on Sky. Is brilliant it? scheduling, I think, there for the BBC. That's brilliant. That <laughs> yeah. In fact, there's nobody there. I can just go fuckity fuckity fuck because nobody's there. <laughs> They're all watching Nick Clegg on the other side. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Is that firmer so solicitors? Relax. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you <laughs> firmer solicitors. No, they're um, fuckity fuckity fuck and son. Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, commissioners for oaths, I'm surprised. <laughs> You, did, you obviously noticed everybody thought that Clegg had won the debate. I mean, that much yes. it yes. seems to be... He was always going to win it, yeah. wasn't he? Because he, all he had to be was not Cameron and not Brown. Yeah. I mean, the Lib Dems could have put up a chimp. Uh, <laughs> and people would said, I thought he came across rather well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what did he say that was so... Because I, I missed the whole debate. He basically said, I am not David Cameron or Gordon Brown. And the audience went wild. <laughs> But it was that was fantastic. Of course, everybody agreed afterwards Clegg had won, but the BBC can't say that. You know, BBC News has to be impartial. Yes. So watch this. And then they would do the properties up, paid for by you, and pocket the difference in personal profit. They got away scot-free. Well, our audience seemed to really like that reaction from <laughs> Nick Clegg. Now, the system doesn't work, but that sort of sentence is, I think, just completely unacceptable in terms of what the public expect for proper punishment. So there again, the audience seemed to react favourably to what David Cameron was saying. You will not back us and support us on keeping education Briefly, spending Briefly, Mr Cameron, then Mr Clegg. Why won't you support education I, spending I as we do? And Gordon Brown scored well there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the audience. Look at this. You've got Freddie Flint off <laughs> if he was able to take up murdering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we've got... Oh, yeah. Every conceivable different type of person there all saying, all three of them are all brilliant. That's the ghost of John Lennon, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, so what was found in the back of a cab after the first debate? Nick Clegg's <laughs> notes. Yes. Do you know what they said? Um, no, but it's the first time middle-of-the-road views have ever been found in a cab. <laughs> Well, specifically, <laughs> what they actually said is, don't act weird like the Prime Minister, <laughs> be normal. <laughs> what have hecklers been saying to him? Who are you? One of them did, but no, there was somebody in Swansea shouted him, you are posh and you get paid three times what the average person earns. Now, that needs a snappy comeback, yes? Yeah. Do you know what yeah, he said? Easy, yeah. I'm not paid three times the average salary, I'm paid two and a half <laughs> times. <laughs> Because, you know, Clegg is quite posh. Yes. You know who he was at school with? Louis Theroux. Louis yeah, Theroux, yes. One. Went to Westminster School, didn't he? He did. Uh, but that's in his favour, because the House of Commons is there and he knows the area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, say, right. As soon as Clegg appeared, um, getting any sort of support, the right-wing papers went mad. Um, <laughs> the Times um, has put the boot in and the Mail basically said, have a look at him, I think you'll find he's foreign. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is he married to a foreign person, his mother, foreign. <laughs> Grandfather, foreign. <laughs> Don't vote for him, cos he's foreign. <laughs> okay, you're absolutely right. What they actually said was, his wife is Spanish, his mother Dutch, his father half Russian, and his spin doctor, German. <laughs> is there anything British about the Lib Dem leader? Well, well, apart from the fact he was born in Buckingham, sure, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, they're going back to Louis III. You know he claims he was Nick Clegg's fag? Yes. Okay, and you yeah. had to wake him up in the morning. Do you know how he woke him up? Oh, God. <laughs> it's in the papers. <laughs> and you're quite right to be so alarmed. Really, yes. <laughs> he woke him by sort of bending him over. <laughs> Can you stop pulling your face now? No, I just on... thought this is absolutely classic attempt to smear all public school boys by suggesting they're homosexuals. <laughs> I'm a public school boy. I ducky. know, Jeremy. How did your fag wake you up? By bumming me. <laughs> <laughs> the star set about uh, exposing some of the Lib Dems' nuttier policies. Do you know what they were? They're going to scrap Trident. Trident. <sighs> and something about gerbils. <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> that was the previous question. No, no, right? there's, there's something about <laughs> The argument is we keep trying...
because it's a deterrent. But you think, well, surely we could save the money and just pretend we've got Trident. Yeah. <laughs> Big cardboard missiles. Yeah, exactly. And you transport them around the country with Work heavily armed... Saddam. Yeah. <laughs> Heav yeah. <laughs> <laughs> heavily armed escort. Every now and then, you pretend there's been a bit of a nuclear accident yeah. and you evacuate Wales. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> Seeing that after Michael Caine, who's the next much-loved popular figure who's come out and risked it all, really, by admitting that he's supporting the Tories? Paul Daniels. No! <laughs> What's the initials? GB. Gordon Brown! <laughs> that's, Brilliant. That's, that's the biggest gap of this campaign, isn't it? Uh, no, it's Gary Barlow. Uh, it's a bit of a comeback. Oh, yes, after, yes. yes. Cameron quipped at the photo opportunity. Uh, the other night on the debate, I felt like I was in Britain's worst boy band. I think they look more like craft work in that. Look, there. <laughs> <laughs> now, does anyone get the impression Mandelson isn't very keen on um, his Gordonness? Well, I, I don't know if he's keen. He's just having fun. Let's have a look at this facial expression. Was Alistair Campbell a good David Cameron <laughs> when you were practising? I've uh, been working uh, by going around the country, talking to people, listening to what they say, and I think what I'll say tonight reflects the messages that people are giving me. Now, let's have a look at uh, Mandelson's reaction to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a face that says, right, you're on the list. <laughs> This, of course, is the election campaign. Nick Clegg lives in London with his Spanish wife and their three children, Antonio, Alberto and Miguel. I wonder who wears the trousers in that house. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Southampton, hey. John Prescott campaigned with the local Labour candidate, drawing the sort of crowds you'd expect. <laughs> And so to round two, which is uh, Caesar, welcome return to the uh, Have I Got News for You Wheel of News, news. thing. All right. C can Wheel I just, news. sorry, raise an objection just at the beginning of yeah. this as a sporting you can't contest? We that can. is a drawback, I admit. Anyway, <laughs> here is the first spin. It's... Oh, it's gone in yellow. Yes, this is the man who can hypnotise rabbits. Yes, his name's Cliff Penrose. What's the name of the bloke? <laughs> <laughs> yes, come on, then, how does he do it? Well, there are some animals, if you just get them on their back in yeah. a certain position, they go into a sort of trance like state, don't yeah. they? And I think he does something. He rubbed their head, or sorry, I don't know why, it's a sort of rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> rabbit thing. Let's talk you through it, yeah, okay. okay? What he does is he lays the bunny down, then he soothes Tammy, stroking her head like yeah, that. It's lovely. Yeah. Then he, um. Oh, heavens, I will skip over that. <laughs> Uh, I'm really not sure what he's doing there. Well, uh, but anyway, I've got a photograph of... It's one of the perks of the job, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the time's rabbit there, working on your own, gets lonely, yeah. doesn't it? Got a photograph, <laughs> a photograph here of what Tammy looks like at the end. <laughs> Clearly dead. There's no... I mean, that, that rabbit is dead, isn't it? But it did give the headline writers really a field day. The sun went with hopnotised. <laughs> the male had hopnotism. Um, and the telegraph had rabbit whisperer puts badly behaved bunnies in a trance. <laughs> Cliff rather undermined all that. Do you know how he did that? He said, I don't hypnotise rabbits. He did. He <laughs> 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 said, you can't hypnotise a rabbit. Yeah, yeah. So I have no idea what that man is doing, no. really, if I'm brutally honest. No. Yes, this is Cliff Penrose, who is being hailed for his ability to hypnotise rabbits. Mr Penrose employs a special technique to make a rabbit lie lifeless and still. Though I find a 4 by 4 is just as effective. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to be in so much shit for that, aren't I? Yeah. yeah. Last time you said that I about know. a fox, you got arrested. I did. The yeah. Metropolitan Police came round and I was interviewed by them for really? saying that I ran over a fox. You sat there and you said... Um, I ran over a fox today and everyone went, ah, oh, and you said, yeah, took me out. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the next spin. <laughs> Goldman Sachs, they've been, um, caught out and the Americans are charging them with fraud. Well, what is it? Is it technically much merchant bank? Anyway, Goldman Sachs. It's an investment bank, I think. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, if you want any more financial advice... Oh, I'll come around. <laughs> 
Yeah, me and Paul, just, we've made a bit yeah, of money we, on it, you know. Yeah, be very, very happy to commentate, you know what I mean, you know. <laughs> Interesting and hypnotised rabbit at all, but yeah. I'll <laughs> Shift them. <laughs> okay, what should I do with my money? <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I do know the answer to this. Goldman Sachs invented a bond to sell to people, um, which was based on subprime mortgages. So it was a, a pretty hopeless thing to sell to people. But they designed it to lose money, because one of the, uh, their other clients was a big hedge fund manager who were betting on the bond to lose. So Goldman Sachs were selling this bond to you, saying this is terrific, behind the back going to one of their clients, bet on this, this is complete rubbish. So Goldman Sachs basically um, proved that the, the entire financial collapse wasn't... It wasn't just an act of God or an accident, it was a fraud. Can I just interrupt at this point? Mm. Yeah. Because I should make it plain, the law being as it is... Yes. Uh, Goldman calls the charges completely unfounded in law and fact. What does Sachs say? <laughs> yes. Oh, what can you do? It. You get yeah. caught, you get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I can't see any of this making it into the finished programme. Are you worried about libel? Yes. <laughs> Unlike you, I haven't ever been done for it before. I think there's very little chance of you getting any more than two years. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, Jeremy. Yeah. Backstage, she was saying what a bunch of crooks Goldman Sachs. Yeah, were, yeah. <laughs> you could present your programme from your cell. <laughs> the mission could be to walk from one end to the <laughs> other <laughs> in the shortest possible time. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Top Gear does mean something different in prison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right, yes, Goldman Sachs Bank uh, and one of its bosses have been charged with fraud. In the wake of the scandal, Goldman Sachs have moved away from the dodgy subprime mod... Uh, I said that all wrong, sorry. You can run that bit, though, at the end. I go, yeah, because I always yeah. do that. Don't you? Me? Nothing to do with me. No, when I make a mistake, it always goes in. Yeah, well, it's usually the best bit you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just going to make loads of mistakes, then. In the wake of the scandal, Goldman Sachs have moved away from the dodgy subprime mortgage market and last week proudly announced a new range of investments in houses on the slopes of Icelandic volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> right, and the last spin. <laughs> Brilliant, it's gone in blue, just what I was hoping. What's this all about? This is about a guy who got arrested for, and charged with drunk driving in a toy car. He was doing four miles an hour when he was apprehended by the... <laughs> Was he filming for you, was it? So no, I mean, challenge. <laughs> good idea, though. It's against the law to drive that. Uh, according to Mr Hutton, the police came up alongside me and the officer said, are you all right there? When I tried to talk, I realised how drunk I was. <laughs> that and the fact he had parked in a Wendy house. Um, <laughs> yes, this is Paul Hutton, who was stopped by the police for driving a toy Barbie car whilst over the limit. He was sentenced to a three-year driving ban and six months on the naughty step. <laughs> According to The Sun, the offending vehicle was a tiny battery-powered Barbie Jeep with a top speed of four miles an hour, which he got second-hand from Richard Hammond. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it is Ian and yes. Claire with four and uh, Paul and Andy with three. Mm -hmm. I felt right. more comfortable with that there, yeah. just in case you wanted to throw any biros at me. Do you know, I deliberately came out with nothing I could throw at you. <laughs> I have no biro, I have nothing, you're quite safe. I drew blood last time I was here, I threw a biro at him and his lip bled. Yeah. It wasn't but he my lip, it was my cheek, it yeah. was right there. Yeah. And you said, it's red ink. <laughs> Not only do you want to destroy the planet, you hurt me. <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen him going, oh, I need some antiseptic wipes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'd been handling it. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Ian and Claire, your four are Herman Van Rompuy, the Pastor Bible, Eric Pickles, and Hertfordshire Highways Authority. Herman Van Rompuy, yes. um, Rumpy Bumpy, he is the president of the European Council. Yes, and he writes haiku. Haiku, and which is 17 syllables. It's a Japanese thingy, isn't it? It's, yes, it's a verse form. <laughs> Didn't Eric Pickles, he was doing his live Twittery bloggy thing, and his finger didn't quite hit the button it was meant to hit, and instead of saying something about shirts that he had bought, he said, 
he missed the R out. Yes, that's true. <laughs> misprint. There's a misprint in the Highways Guide in Eric Pickles' uh, tweet in I the Pastor Bible, but Herman von Rumpy never makes an error. He's faultless. Yes, oh, that's his oh, oh, <laughs> How do you think Herman's poems have gone down with other EU politicians? Uh, there's been fisticuffs in the uh, corridors of power. Somebody nutted him in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Nigel Farage loved yeah, them. Yeah. yeah, he seems like a haiku kind of person exactly. to me. Yeah. Uh, UKIP's Nigel Farage said, "Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, God help us." <laughs> Is that seventeen? <17? laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Then you got council workmen there from Royston in Hertfordshire. Um, they were left red faced. Uh, when road sign painters fouled up, they wanted to write "Keep Clear," but they actually wrote "Keir Cleep." <laughs> According to the Telegraph, local resident Paul Brett was the first to notice the mistake, despite the fact that he's dyslexic. He, of course, thought it said bus lane. <laughs> um, Eric Pickles, he proudly told his uh, four and a half thousand online followers, which seems like a lot for Eric Pickles, but there we are, <laughs> uh, my shits are from M&S, <laughs> which was warmly received by rival Fatty and uh, noted wit John Prescott, who replied, that's some sponsorship deal you've got. <laughs> Of course, he meant to say shirts. My shit shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what lesson Mr Pickles has learned from the, uh, from the incident? Don't Twitter. Well, actually, uh, he explained in a later tweet, the R is always important in shirts. <laughs> Although, in the case of Eric's shirts, not nearly as important as the X, the X, the X and the L. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pasta Bible, this is a typo. It made headlines this week, quite big and quite bad. It was a recipe for tagliatelle with sardines and prosciutto. Now, it should have said, add salt and freshly ground black pepper. What it actually said was, add salt and freshly ground black pepper. <laughs> that, that's... <laughs> bad. That's bad. Yep. Bob Sessions, Penguin's head of publishing, said, we were mortified this has become an issue of any kind. <laughs> And why anyone would be offended, we don't know. <laughs> Paul and Andy, OK? Here's yes. yours. <clears throat> Paul Scholes, Lily the Meerkat, Ian Cameron and a pillow in South Korea. Paul Scholes, he scored a goal last week and was in the news because um, Gary Neville gave him a, a big oh, sort of kiss God. on the lips. Uh, kissing the South Korean uh, cushion is gay slang for... Um, <laughs> first date. <laughs> uh, Meerkat... <laughs> This meerkat, they advertise for a mate for this meerkat. Yeah, he hasn't got a mate. And, and that's David Cameron's dad, and they kissed each other at the weekend as well. So everybody's been kissing each other, apart from the meerkat, probably, because he hasn't yeah. got a mate. Is that right? It's Millie that... Yeah. Bang yeah. on, very good. Yeah. Millie. 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 They've all received a very public kiss, apart from Lily the meerkat, who uh, doesn't have anyone to kiss, oh. and is now using a meerkat dating website to find <laughs> the one. She lives as an animal theme park in Melton Mowbray. Hang on, does Melton Mowbray, don't they make pies? Pork pies. <laughs> <laughs> Meerkat pies. Yeah. Yeah. You see the ones, they're the ones with a really tall crust in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Lily's dating profile says? No hypnotised rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Alert, dark-eyed, inquisitive, free-spirited lady with a good sense of humour who enjoys fine dining, digging... <laughs> <laughs> I've gone off her now. She sounds like needy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, quite clingy, me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, at midnight, I saw you coming miles away. What time <laughs> you gone there? <laughs> <laughs> Cameron's parents apparently were there to target the get grey vote. You nearly made a mistake there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the R was nearly missing again. Mm, it is. <laughs> I did as well, that was the uh -huh. funny thing. You're very astute. Paul Scholes, Manchester United midfielder, kissed on the lips, as you said, by uh, exultant teammate Gary Neville. Indeed, yes. After he scored a very lucky 94th minute uh, late, winner in, yeah. in the Manchester derby. Here we, here we are, look at that. Oh, <laughs> that's lovely. Paul Scholes, to me, doesn't look very sure about no. that. <laughs> Paul Scholes is thinking, there's cameras over there, Gary. I'm seeing you afterwards. Come on. <laughs> now, the bit you're all looking forward to, obviously, the pillow. A South Korean man 
uh, recently shared a passionate kiss with a full-length pillow after the pair were married in a special ceremony in front of a local priest. <laughs> uh, would you like to see a picture of the happy couple? Yeah. Here they yeah. are. <laughs> Who is he and why do you think he married his pillow? Well, is he perhaps not the most balanced person in the world? <laughs> What's what his what tog rating? What is it? Because if he's on a six, I'm in there with him, you know what I mean? <laughs> his pillow is technically a Dekimakura. It's a kind of large, huggable pillow from Japan, often with a type of cartoon character on the side. We've got a picture of one here. There you go. Ah, uh, now it's turning into something different. Yes. <laughs> I'm afraid it is. According to a friend of Lee's... Um, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's got friends. friends. <laughs> he's, the Vars. He's, he's <laughs> <laughs> he sticks flowers in me every Friday. <laughs> According to a friend of Lee, he's completely obsessed with his pillow and takes it everywhere. It doesn't really matter, does it? As long as it doesn't interfere with how he performs uh, uh, in his job as Korean Prime Minister. It doesn't <laughs> really matter. <laughs> is there a new bear? No, nah, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> OK, they've all received a very public kiss, apart from Lily the meerkat, who doesn't have anyone to kiss and is now using a meerkat dating website. If any of you are worried about Lily the meerkat, you needn't be. She's dead. <laughs> Side of a broken heart, apparently. There we go. So... <laughs> well, she didn't see that coming, did no, she? she didn't. <laughs> oh. you, you didn't run her over, did you? <laughs> It's very tricky to run a meerkat over because they look out all the time. You've got to sneak up on them and then put your foot down. <laughs> Top tip. Um, <laughs> on Sunday, David Cameron was photographed kissing his father and was immediately barred from his local bed and breakfast. <laughs> time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Bark, the dog magazine. <laughs> so much worse than its sister publication, Bite. <laughs> With what can turn your dog's world upside down? Putting him in the tumble dryer. <laughs> Gluing him to the ceiling. Yes. <laughs> the answer is, in fact, worms. This is an advert for deworming tablets from Bark magazine. Of course, it's very difficult to get dogs to swallow pills. Uh, one of the best ways I find is to grind them up and sprinkle them on their testicles. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? Mm. That's what I do. <laughs> I think, I think... That's what I do to my dogs. <laughs> Next, Winnie the Pooh and Sherlock Holmes what? Have secret love child. <laughs> the bear that solves crimes. Yeah. <laughs> Turned down by Meerkat. Is it something to do with cricket? It's in Peter Pan's first 11. Uh, according to a new book, it's the 150th anniversary of the founding of Britain's first celebrity cricket team that featured players like Jerome K. Jerome, A. A. Milne, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and a young Geoffrey Boycott. <laughs> um, <laughs> next, want a happy retirement? What? Buy yourself a dog. Don't have kids. Have lots of money. No, it's spend time with your friends. According to the uh, Psychological Society, it's a myth that spending time with children <laughs> brings more happiness. <laughs> I don't know, my local priest is one of the happiest men I know. <laughs> Next, women who what cause earthquakes? Oh, uh, people expose... women who expose their flesh. This is the mm. man in Iraq, was it, who suggested that earthquakes are caused by women dressing in a sort of what he considered an inappropriate fashion? Absolutely right. Tree. Iran, the yes. actual answer is, wear revealing clothing. Yes. Because, yeah. um, yes, it leads to male desire, which sparks earthquakes. An Iranian clerk has claimed that women are to blame clark? for earthquakes. It was a cleric, was Cleric. It? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's time it's a to guy does the driving licences. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got a driving licence and I can't see that that says Clark. No. It doesn't, it, it says, says Jeremy Cleric. Clericson. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, yeah. An Iranian oh. cleric. Yeah. No, you're right, it does say Clark. It does say Clark, but it just goes to show what a but rank amateur I am. It isn't be Clark, quoted it's Cleric. If he no, was a cleric. But it is, but that said Clark, so you were... Wait, 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 wait. An Iranian chap has claimed that... <laughs> <laughs> it's the way around all these. There's always a way around it, isn't there? An Iranian chap has claimed that women are to blame for earthquakes. <laughs> and finally, what 
is a lover and a licker and needs to get out more. The Pope. <laughs> it's obviously from Bark magazine, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So it could be any breed of dog, really. So with Dachshund, Great Dane, we don't know one of those. No. It's actually my Korean Jindo. Yeah. <laughs> the article in Bark magazine describes one dog as a lover and a licker, and quite possibly a joker, a toker, and a midnight smoker. <laughs> So, the final scores are... Ian and Claire have eight. Paul and Andy, you have seven. It's oh, Ian. <laughs> Before we go, there's, uh, there's just time for the caption competition. Questions are asked after David Attenborough's Life on Earth cast party gets out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Claire Balding, Paul Merton and Andy Hamilton. And I leave you with news that in Tehran, there's an embarrassing moment at a press conference in which the president denies claims that Iran has nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours into a shoot, a photographer finally gets his subject to look vaguely intelligent. <laughs> After waiting 15 minutes for stragglers, the Labour Party coach trip to celebrate Peter Mandelson's birthday finally sets off. <laughs> and there's a minor scare when John Prescott's chip pan catches fire. <laughs> Good night. That wasn't quite enough for you. Have I Got News For You Too is now available on a double BBC CD. Next tonight on BBC Two, this week gets totally Frank Skinnerized. Someone has thrown an egg at... Um... Cameron, though. That's right, yeah. It's still a bit of the news, and the guy throws the egg and then sort of turns around and points that way, is it? You're thinking that's going to work. <laughs> Somebody over there threw an egg, mate. He was whisked away by security. <laughs> <laughs>